Hello everybody, this is ASLB, and right now I am recording the Miraculous Ladybug Christina V Q&A. I'm sorry for this setup, I don't have an iPhone capture card or something, but this is all I have. And honestly, I'm not going to give any sort of commentary, I'm just going to leave this here. And I'm just going to let you guys watch and I won't stop until it, like, I won't stop until it's, and I won't stop until it's over. I'm sorry, I don't know how to begin. I am completely shaking right now. So, yeah, I got this uh, iPhone stand. I got the speaker right here for all to hear. And hopefully this turns out good. Honestly, I am so scared. Right now, okay, three o'clock. Hopefully, she comes. Come on, come on. How does it work? It could be any minute. Oh, now. Are we doing the thing now? Yeah, we are live. Uh, people. Oh my gosh. Uh, so I'm going to give it like a couple of seconds for people to flood in here. Um, and right after that, we will do a quick introduction. Okay, uh, sweet. And then we'll start it on some questions. All right. How, uh, how am I uh, sounding, chat? Is it good? Is my AC too loud? No, you sound good to me. Uh, let's see if I can get back oh, answer either. Just, it should pop up on the bottom. All right. Do, do, do. Okay, so hello everybody. I'm Miraculous Amino. I'm Tristan from Team Amino. And we're here with Christina V, the voice of Miraculous Ladybug. Um, we have a lot of questions. Hi, everyone. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I just say hi. Uh, we have a, a lot of questions no. from the post we featured yesterday, so we're going to see how many we can get through um, while Christina has time for us. Um, and I actually found out earlier that it's also your birthday today, so happy birthday. It's my birthday! I just posted a picture of my cat. Oh, that's great. What kind of do you have? Boy. Oops. Um... So do you have anything you want to say before we get into questions? Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Um, I'm Christina, and I'm the voice of Ladybug, and I'm really excited to be here with you guys today. Thanks for coming, fam. Invite your friends. All right, so you, you ready to get into some questions? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Um, so let's start with a, a pretty easy one here. So uh, a user on Amino named Potato asks, do you get recognized as Ladybug's character? Um, and if so, how often do you get recognized? Ooh, so the great thing about being a voice actor is uh, I don't, it, um, people see the character and not me. So I'm pretty anonymous. Um, but obviously when I'm at conventions or, you know, uh, things that are ladybug related people people tend to recognize me um i post a lot of selfies so maybe that's why um but yeah i i, I feel like uh it's kind of like my secret identity because um nobody really knows if i don't tell them yeah uh, so kind of as like a follow-up to that one uh somebody named chloe bourgeoisie asks how did you get the voice of Marionette and Mar Miraculous Ladybug? Like, how'd you end up getting that role? Ooh, how'd I end up? Okay. Um, it was a actually pretty long process. I, I think I first read for her when I was like, maybe, maybe two years before the show started. And uh, I never heard back. And I heard from them again from a, a different studio, and they're uh, auditioning again for Ladybug. 
And I went in and I read for everybody. I read for Alex and Chloe and Tiki and Marinette. And uh, I thought, I actually thought that I would probably get Chloe if I was cast as somebody. Because especially at that point in my life, I was getting a lot of mean girl roles. So that would have been interesting. But um, yeah, I auditioned and then I had a callback. And then I had another callback um, with Disney. And it was pretty nerve-wracking. and I found out that I uh, I was Ladybug while I was watching the Frozen Frozen show at uh, California Adventure, and um, yeah, crazy things happen to me while I'm at Disneyland. I find out that I get cast in uh, these huge roles when I'm there, so I'm excited. Well, Disney is the most magical place on earth, so it makes sense that magical things will happen while you're there. Yeah, like I I was in Disney World and I got cast to do a voice. <laughs> Uh, a voice of one of the new rides at Disney World while I was there on vacation, so that was cool. <laughs> right. Uh, I don't think I can say. I think it has to be a secret. Okay. That's fine. Um, <laughs> so talking about... Anyone's... Yeah. yeah. Uh, talking about other characters that you voice, you've done the voice of Sailor Mars and Sailor Moon. Um, I did. What? So Liz from Amino is from <laughs> What your favorite character is that you voiced, or what series that you voice acted in has been your favorite to work on? Okay, beside Ladybug, um, let's see. There's a show called The Seven Deadly Sins on Netflix, and uh, I voice I voice a pig. His name is Hawk, and it's just it's so much fun. We were recording it the other day, and it's we're just dying of laughter. Because it's such a great character and such a funny show. So I think he's probably one of my top favorite characters I voiced. Um, and on, on the topic of working with other voice actors, um, Kiki from here asks, who's the funniest voice actor on Miraculous Ladybug to work with? The funniest? You know what? I actually don't see other people when I'm recording. It's just me and Ezra and Michael Fox. And... Uh, I mean, Ezra and Michael are really funny. So, <laughs> you know what? That Keith Silverstein, uh, the voice of Hoth, is actually like the sweetest and most caring guy you'll ever meet, and he's really funny. And he always plays the bad guys, which I find is hilarious. Um, so for some of the aspiring voice actors who might be in the chat, Parachute Cosplay yeah. asks. What is the best way to learn and practice doing all of your different voices and accents? Ooh, the best way to learn? Um, so, a great thing has happened, it was especially with voiceover. Um, the best way to learn is by playing games and by watching anime or watching cartoons, because you really get a feel for, like, the style that's currently in. You know, styles change. You know, I'm sure you've noticed that uh, cartoons sound different today than they did maybe 10 years ago. But uh, I learned by uh, by um, you know, watching subtitled Sailor Moon. This is when I was a kid, way before I was cast. And uh, by voice acting the characters just by reading along. Um, I memorized The Lion King so that, you know, when I was seven, I would, uh, I would just voice act the entire movie by myself instead of just watching it so um i think playing like you said playing games watching the things you want to be in are really helpful awesome um and kind of on the same topic like do you ever find that your voice gets strained or tired while while recording stuff for voice acting um yeah you know uh I love, like I said, I love voicing half the pig, but it was four hours of basically like squealing like a pig and screaming. So that's a, it makes my voice a little bit raspy. As you can, you can probably hear it a little bit right now. And um, I worked, I worked a lot of hours. Um, yesterday I was in the booth for seven hours voicing a little boy. So uh, yeah, my voice definitely does get tired. Um, I just have to do my best to take care of it and stay hydrated. Cool. Um. And the seven hours about like average length for an acting session. We actually had somebody ask like, how long do you spend voice acting for each episode? Um, 
So usually it will go past four hours a session. And for Ladybug, I'd say it takes maybe an hour and a half to two hours to record one episode. Cool. Um, yeah. I had somebody ask, so Rena Rogue here on Amino asked, if you ever like mess up your lines or have any trouble when getting into the, the voice acting booth? Ooh, I mean, I mess up my lines all the time. <laughs> I used to be really self-conscious about flubbing, they call it, um, but I I have this one director, um, his name is Bob Buckle, and he directs me a lot, and he said something to me years ago um, that really made me, that kind of freed me from that fear, and he just said that he loved it when I flubbed and that it was really funny, and that I'm really dedicated to trying to get through lines when I could just stop any time, and that it happens to everybody. And that's been really, uh, that was really important for me to keep growing as an actor, to get over that particular fear. So I have one more uh, voice acting question that I'd like to ask from our, yeah. our fan. And then we're going to move on to more, like, miraculous um, specific ones. Um, so um, what, okay. oh, so Lily here asked, what initially inspired you to start voice acting? What initially inspired me? So... This is ancient history. So maybe you guys weren't even born, but back in the day, the early days of the internet, um, there was a, there, everything was uh, through like yeah, uh, AOL keywords. Do you remember that? Yeah, I actually do, yeah. Yeah, so um, I was browsing my favorite AOL keyword, uh, Japanimation, and um, I came across a clip of Sailor Moon, and I, like I said, I was like 12, and um, I noticed that it was in Japanese, which I'd never heard before, um, and uh, it was that moment where I kind of had the epiphany, <laughs> oh, Sailor Moon's not real, of course not, but actually there's somebody doing her voice, and I want to be that person, and that's what um, inspired me to start voice acting, but like I said, I, I had some like I feel like I was kind of born to voice act because I've been doing it for, like, unknowingly for so long, even before that, like The Lion King and stuff and all my favorite cartoons. Um, so uh, I I wanted to be a voice actor since I was a little kid, and, uh, and I'm glad I was able to start so soon. And I was really kind of fearless at first. I didn't know, you know, anything about entertainment industry. I grew up in a town called Norwalk, and uh, not many actors come out of there, you know? So, uh, yeah, that, that's how, that's when I decided I wanted to become a voice actor. Cool. So let's see if we can get into some questions about Marionette herself. I saw this one come up a lot, and uh, the one that I wrote down is from Puns and Bugs here on Amino. What hairstyle do you want on Marionette in the future? Ooh, what hairstyle? Ooh, why don't we just let her hair down? That would be pretty cool. Or like a one ponytail. Yeah, we actually had um, somebody we'd ever see her with her hair done. Oh, I feel like there must have been an episode where we did, but maybe not. I'm just thinking about fan art. I hope so. I mean, the pigtails are cute, but uh, I think uh, I think letting her hair loose would um, I don't know. It would be a good change. I would like to see that. Um, so as with her as a character, Ladybug Lover wants to know, um, do you feel a strong connection with your character? And, and if so, why? Um, I do. I feel like, um, well, when I was first reading for the role of Ladybug, um, I was, I, I was blown away, one, by the artwork and that a show was actually, like, this was actually being made. Um, and I feel like she was me when I was, when I was that age. Um, but instead of, a uh, instead of fashion, I, I wanted to be a voice actor. Um, so I feel, I really feel like, uh, like playing Ladybug gives me a chance to go back to high school again. And it lets me be the superhero that I always wanted to be. So, yeah. Okay, let me see if I can find who asked this question. We had something similar in that. Okay, so DDF asks, if you were a superhero, what powers do you think you would have? Ooh, what powers? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna say that I'm a, I'd be a miraculous superhero, 
And my Kwame would be my Dom specifically, who is a 14 named Frey. So Frey would be my Kwame. And my superpower would be... Oh, that's tough. Um... Oh, I would love to either fly or have, like, super strength. Or have, like, Violet from The Incredibles. Eat any one of those, I'd love. Corgi Kwame. Um, somebody asked you what your Kwame would be, so I'm glad we could get that out of the way. Yeah, um, NRPs. Let's, let's flip the script a little bit real quick and say, Amelia asked if you were a super villain and not a superhero... What do you think you'd be called, and like, what would your motivation for being a supervillain be? Oh, oh no. Okay, so I think <laughs> that's really tough. I think I would kind of be like John Wick, and I would just avenge like I would avenge dogs. Oh, that would be that would be my quest. Well, is that wait? Is that still like a villain though? <laughs> I don't know, you sound more like a vigilante. But, okay, cool. I could go with vigilante, but it was just... I'd be a... Uh, let's see. K9... I don't know. Someone come up with a name for me. But yeah, I would just be... I would be a vigilante, and I would just uh, punish those people. Um, 